All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's a little special video for you guys today. Um, I've wanted to do this for quite some time, and I, I normally tend to save this for, you know, some of my better years of teaching, something to give you like a special thing to remember my classroom by, uh, like you don't already have enough things to remember me by. But this is something I like to do that's very special. Uh, I'm gonna do my, the best I can to video this. Uh, hopefully it turns out well. Um, even if it doesn't turn out the greatest, I might still re release this video. Um, but what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be dissecting a shark, okay? Now, I'm not going to be going super in-depth, and it's not going to be as, you know, entertaining as it would be in the classroom. But one thing I wanted to, I, we're going to place the shark right here on the table, okay? Now, I'm going to need probably need to adjust my camera a few times uh, so you guys can see some things. Um, but what this is is a dogfish shark. Now, the dogfish shark is a shark that's found mostly in mostly in, uh, in all the oceans of the world, but mostly in your coastal waters, especially warm coastal waters. Uh, it is the most abundant, well-known, and well-researched shark in the world. Uh, and it's called the dogfish shark because they hunt in packs like dogs. Uh, and just a few more facts about, about the dogfish shark. Uh, they can grow to be anywhere from 2 to 5 feet in length. Uh, they can live 25 to 80 years old. Uh, typically, the ones in the Atlantic Ocean are 25 to 40 years old. And in the Pacific Ocean, they can live up to 80 years. Uh, and usually, the Pacific Ocean ones are typically the longer ones as well. Uh, they are typically gray with white spots. And that's going to be kind of hard to see on our shark here. Uh, but we're going to try, I'll try to zoom in in certain, in certain places so you can see that. Uh, the sharks can also be found in... in in black, brown, or white, okay? But the most common is gray. Uh, they are very aggressive, it can be quite aggressive, and defend itself using poisonous spines. And I'll point a couple, of, I'll, I will point one of those out to you, okay, if they are visible. Um, they typically, when they give birth, they have about two to 15 eggs that hatch inside the mother's body. And those little babies, once they're, they're hatched on the inside, are called fries. Uh, they'll sit inside the mother's inside the mother's body and develop for about two years. When they're finally born, they leave the mother's body. They're called pups. Uh, they typically eat crustaceans. They'll eat fish, squid, octopus, and other sharks. Uh, they do have very few natural predators. Obviously, larger sharks are going to be their predators. Uh, killer whales are their predators and humans. Uh, they are considered vul vulnerable to extinction. Uh, mainly due to finning and for meat production. Uh, typically in, especially Japan and some of your coastal Asian region, Asian countries, uh, they will, they have shark fin soup. It's one of their main delicacies. Um, and the shark meat is also uh, a, a huge seller. Uh, and it's been an issue for most of these sharks uh, in the past 75 years. And they're considered very vulnerable to extinction because of this. Uh, a lot of times uh, when they are caught for shark fin, for the shark fin soup, uh, they will cut the fins off of a live shark and then they'll throw the shark back in there. And obviously the shark's not going to be able to survive very well without the things it needs to swim with. Uh, that has been uh, a focus in the shark community and in the fishing community as a whole in the past few years and it has that process and that and that has started to go down quite a bit. Um, and I will link in the description uh, a few things about sharks, uh, especially this shark that are some interesting things to know, uh, as well as some organizations that help to research the shark and, you know, not put them in such a bad light, like things like you see in like the movie Jaws, okay? Sharks aren't always a, very, uh, a bad thing. Okay. Now, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna start off with the external features, uh, and then we'll move inside. First things that you're gonna see, obviously, are the fins, okay? Uh, this little dorsal fin right here, okay? The, this is one, the first dorsal fin. That's the second dorsal fin. Uh, those are what your, your sharks are typically known for. If you've seen the movies, you know, you'll see this fin slightly sticking out above the water. Um, we have the eyes, okay? They usually have very large eyes. I'll see if I can bring this up to the camera a little bit. 
It's kind of hard to see, but we have very large eyes. Uh, we have the nostril. We have two nostrils here. Obviously, you see the mouth. It's not very easy to open up the mouth on a, a small shark like this. Um, one of the things that's very hard to see on camera uh, is going to be the little gills. Uh, and the biggest thing about sharks is that sharks, you know, typically don't, you know, they breathe in through their mouth, okay? Um, and what they'll do is they'll take in water through their mouth and they'll pass over a set of internal gills. And we might be able to see those when I cut this up today. Uh, and then once the water is returned, it goes back out through these external gills. Uh, another thing you're going to see, it might be very difficult to see on this one. Uh, there is a line that kind of runs midway through the shark right here called the lateral line. That is one of the ways that a shark detects uh, its surroundings and its prey. Okay, the other place is right here around the nose. It's very hard to see around here. Uh, there's a little depressions uh, on right, right here in the middle of the head. Uh, that is where they, the, the scientific name for that is the impuli of Loren, Lorenzini. Uh, it's very hard to pronounce. Uh, but there are two little depressions that detect electromagnetic current, okay? Uh, when you or other animals move, uh, your muscles produce electromagnetic currents and, sci and sharks use those, that particular area to, to detect uh, those electromagnetic currents. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is a preserved shark. It's not in the absolute greatest of conditions. Uh, one thing I can tell you is some of you are going to be wondering if this is a male or a female. Uh, this happens to be a female. Uh, you can tell that by looking at these fins here. Uh, if these were more pointed, right in the center here, and they're a little bit thicker, there's, it would be considered a male. They have like these little claspers that grab onto the female when they are mating. Now, we're gonna go ahead and start looking at the inside. Okay, I'm gonna, this might take me a little bit of time to get through the skin. Uh, so just be patient with me. Okay, I'm gonna try to cut this up. Try to make the body as flat as possible. Always remember when you are dissecting anything or you're cutting anything to always cut away from you. Uh, try not to do like I just did and, and almost cut straight to your fingers. Okay. I'm seeing the inside already. I may uh, take a break here for a second and so we can move in a little bit with the screen. I'm sorry my hands are in the way. Uh, I'm just trying to get through this thick skin here. And yes, if you are wondering, yes, the smell is horrendous. It smells a little bit like rotting fish. Try to open this up a little bit more so we can see some things. Okay, cut this is a little bit more. And for those of you that are more scientific leaning, you know that this is just for demonstration purposes. You know, I'm not gonna do the exact greatest of jobs cutting this up. Uh, this is just to show my students. Okay, now, it's gonna make this a little hard, oh boy. Okay, I'm just noticing a few things as, I, as I'm cutting open, okay? Some things I have not seen before, so I'll have to, do, have to look this up afterwards. I believe these might be little babies. I'm not 100% certain. I've cut up a, a few dozen of these sharks over the years. I have never seen something, these things in there before, so I'm not exactly sure what they are. Uh, but this is gonna be uh, 
a little challenging for some of the, for those of you that are a little squeamish. So I do apologize. Okay. Um, what you're looking at in here is you, you can see a few things. Okay. This shark is really it's a very small one, so it's not going to be very easy to show you. But the first thing you can see right here is you can see the heart. The heart is located near its gills, and the gill, since the gills are what helps it to breathe, uh, I'm just going to shift my camera up a little bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. Okay, so when you have when you have the heart. Obviously your heart is gonna be near where you breathe, okay? Since its gills are located near its mouth, its heart's gonna be near its mouth, okay? The next thing we have is we have a three-lobed liver, okay? I'm trying to do my best to show you that here as well. This liver here uh, is what sharks use to help them float, okay? Um, most fish have a internal swim bladder which helps them to float. Uh, sharks don't. And the way sharks help themselves float without that swim bladder is they uh, secrete oils from their liver. Um, if you ever think about it, the last, when we did that little experiment where I mixed all the, the liquids together, uh, the, you know, different types. We had the honey, the syrup, uh, the water, the soap, you name it. Um, the oil, the ones that were oils typically floated to the top. And that's how sharks typically get themselves to float and be buoyant as they secrete those oils and it floats to the top. Now, one thing that's gonna be kind of difficult to see, and this is such a bad shape, is the stomach, okay? Uh, the stomach here was, it seems like this particular part right here that's been really damaged for some reason, um, right in here. Uh, obviously, all the content all the contents um, are outside, uh, so it's kind of poorly preserved, okay? Um, they're not gonna be able to find anything in the stomach since there's very few things to, to see here. Um, part of the stomach there. Uh, this is the small intestine here right before things leave the body. Uh, and I always have people ask me, why do I cut up sharks? Um, I have a really weird fascination with sharks. You know, I grew up, part of my life was in, I grew up in Hawaii and got to experience tiger sharks, hammerhead sharks up close uh, when they were spawning and, and when they were feeding. Seeing hundreds of sharks in one place is very amazing. Uh, also, when I was in college, one of my very last projects I got to work on um, in a zoology class, and that's just the study of animals. Um, the last animal I got to dissect was a shark. It's much bigger than this one. Uh, and it left a lasting impression on me. Um, I just wanted to sh share this with you guys. Um, hopefully everything turned out okay. I don't know if you can see everything. Um, I may post, like I said, I may post this video just for the fun of it even if you can't really see very much, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have a great summer. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and goodbye, guys.